Now, uh, today we are um, studying this morning. Um, we have, at the, in our foyer, we have a question, uh, a question box. So if you have a Bible question, you put a question in there and then we will try to, I will try to, uh, find a Bible answer for your question because Bible questions deserve Bible answers. You agree with that? Do your head like this right here. So uh, if you have a question of any sort, you put it in the box and we'll do our best to try and find a Bible answer for that question. We've had some, if you go back, even if you weren't able to be here with us, on some Sunday nights where uh, uh, we just say, well, there are a couple different possibilities and, and here they are. Um, so sometimes we can't even be definitive, but we'll look and see what the Bible says. Now this sermon today uh, comes from that, uh, from that box. The question in the box says, do we have to tithe? Uh, that compounded with the fact that a couple people talked to me real fr uh, friendly, kind, and they said, uh, uh, Brother Aaron, uh, d uh, you know, should we give a tithe and offering? I'm like, yeah. And they said, uh, well, you, you don't preach on it. I said, do what? I have before. It's been, it has been a while. You know, I can get to that. So here we go. This is, some people say church always talks about money. It's not true. Some people say I don't talk about it. <laughs> but uh, I'm talking about it today. So the question though is, do we have to tithe? Now I kind of give the answer, but it was wrong answer, so pay attention. Do we have to tithe? Here we go. Uh, the verse we'll start with is Psalm 24 verse 1, where the Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we are thankful uh, to be here today in the assembly and to serve you, to sing praises to your name, and, and to study from your word. May you be glorified here. We continue to ask you for the increase here at East Point. We thank you for all the activities here, Vacation Bible School, our special dinners, and uh, all the things that uh, we have planned if you allow us to live and to serve you. If, you. if the Lord should tarry a few more days, may we be found faithful in service in your kingdom. We praise and thank you and pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I start with this verse from Psalm 24 because it really establishes ownership. And I think when we approach the subject of tithing or giving, uh, it's important we, we get this established from the start. Everything belongs to God. Now that really puts it all in perspective because the Bible says that here in this verse as well as other verses. From the book of Deuteronomy, Moses said it, David said it here in Psalm 24. In the book of Job, God asked Job, he says, Who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything under heaven belongs to, it all belongs to God. And when you really get that in perspective, it changes the way we look at things. Because really, we struggle with this idea. One of the first, maybe the very first four-letter word that a child will learn You've heard this before, haven't you? We've had children. The, yeah, we've had children, they say. The first four-letter word they use is M-I-N-E. Mine. You take a, the most beautiful little girl possible. She's in, the, she's in the nursery back here. Everything's going great. She's here for church. Family's got her here. Everything's great. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Everything is perfect. Got her little toy. She's happy. And then a snotty-nosed little Davis boy. <laughs> comes up and takes the toy away. And then the little girl will unleash a fury of exorcist type proportion and starts with that four letter word, mine, mine. We struggle with it because it's because it's, it's mine. We struggle, uh, we, don't, we don't like to share. You don't like to share maybe, uh, you don't want somebody to borrow your tools, your lawnmower, your four-wheeler, the dress you've got. There are people in your house that won't even borrow your remote control. Why? Because it's his. It's his remote control. He sits in his chair, he watches his TV. It's his. Uh, we struggle with this all over when it comes to uh, self-storage, if you want to go in business. Self-storage facilities are on the rise. In the last 20 years, they've almost tripled in the United States of America. That tells us we would rather store our stuff than give it away. We have, I mean, the majority of places that I go and people that I know, the garage is full of junk. The cars are worth thousands of dollars. They sit in the driveway. Yeah, it don't make a whole lot of sense when you think about it. You say, hey, 
But it, but it, it's indicative of the fact that we, we just hoard stuff. We keep stuff, even stuff we don't need. We, we struggle with, we think, it's mine. It's my stuff. And that's why some people, you know, that well, the church shouldn't tell me how to spend my money. And that's the problem. You think it's your money. But actually, the Bible says it all belongs to God. It, it doesn't belong to us. It actually belongs to God. Uh, God said, we just looked in the book of Job, who has a claim against me that I must pay? So when you consider the idea, uh, the Bible tells us, Naked a man comes from his mother's womb, and as he comes, so he departs. So you can't take anything with you, right? The old, the old saying goes, you know, you've never seen a hearse with a luggage rack. Because you come in with nothing, and that's what you could take with you. It's nothing. So it's really not yours. And that changes the way you can look at things. It's like, imagine this, you go out to eat with Bill Gates. Just picking a really rich guy, not that I know him personally, because I don't. Really rich man, and he takes you out to a fast food restaurant, and he buys you some French fries. And you're sitting there eating the French fries, and then Bill Gates says to you, he says, uh, can I have a fry? And then you say, uh, no. They're my fries. And then Bill Gates says, uh, I just bought you those fries. I could buy you a ton of fries. I could buy you a chain of fast food restaurants to serve you fries, more fries than you can possibly fathom in your lifetime. But you can't have one of my fries. But see, that's the way it comes when it comes to giving back to God. It all belongs to God. He's given you some French fries. And he's just wanting you to honor him, acknowledge that he's there, that it all comes from him, and that you live for his glory. He's wanting you to give some French fries back. But some people say, oh, no, 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 these are my fries. And, and they're not. The Bible furthermore says uh, in Ecclesiastes 5.10, whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. You know, Newsweek done a study a few years ago, and um, they had an assortment of people that they had in this survey, and the people who made $25,000 a year, they said that to live comfortably, they would really need $54,000 a year they could live comfortably. Further people in the survey, people that made $100,000 a year, they said to live comfortably, they would really need $192,000 a year. And the survey reached the conclusion, it was almost double, no matter how much money you made, in the mind of the people that, that earned the money, they thought that with about, if I made about twice as much money, then I could really live comfortably. And the conclusion of the matter is this. Uh, whoever loves money never has money enough. The, the, the gap between more and enough is a gap that can never be bridged. But our, our world's like, man, we'll work two jobs, three jobs, we'll work daytime, we'll work nighttime. Somebody else can raise our kids. It's what you got to do, man, to have the American dream. Because we think it's our stuff. And we think that gives us a position, and it doesn't, and it's not. It actually all comes from God, it all belongs to God, and He's saying through His Word only He can bring us true satisfaction and peace. The peace that passes understanding. Consider the Bible says in James 1 verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes from God, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And that, can, that changes the way we consider things, you know. You wake up in God's house, in God's bed. You uh, go turn on God's shower. You use God's towels when you, when you get out. You eat God's breakfast. That's cornflakes and black coffee. Caffeinated. Caffeinated. You, you drive God's car to go to God's job. You come back home, you sit on God's couch, you watch God's TV, you cheer on God's team. Wildcats. That's a joke, that's a joke. But it, it does put in perspective, it all belongs to God. Nothing's yours. You brought nothing in, you take nothing out. It all belongs to God. That's who it is. Because that's the most important thing when it comes to giving, is considering who it belongs to, and it all belongs to God. Now when we consider the tithe, tithe means a tenth, or the tenth part. Ten percent. And some people say, well now hold on a second. That tithe is actually, that's, that's a law of Moses idea. And that's partly true, but actually, uh, since we're mentioning, it actually goes back before the law of Moses. Because the Bible says in Genesis 14, it says Abram, who was Abraham, he gave a, a Melchizedek, 
who was priest and king. He was from Salem. Uh, it may seem insignificant until you read the book of Hebrews chapter 7, entire chapter about Melchizedek. Also in Psalm 110 verse 4. But the idea that Abraham, 500 years or so, before the law was even written, he gives a tenth. Notice that. So it's before the law. And then when the law came into existence, notice what the law of Moses says, the entire tithe of the herd and the flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. It's more than animals though, it's what they grew. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 14, be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. See, it was God requiring His people to give a tenth, the first fruit, to give back to Him. Now, He has all the silver and gold. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. All the silver and gold are mine, declares the Lord Almighty. He has all the cattle. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to Him. All the french fries in all the universe belong to Him. But He was asking His people to give back a tenth of what He blessed them with. And if they didn't do that, if they didn't honor Him in that way... It was considered robbery. Really? Yeah, that's what Malachi says. The prophet says, uh, this is God speaking, Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. See, when the people, when God's people didn't honor Him in that way, it was robbery. They robbed God. He don't need the french fries. They all belong to Him. But it's the way you honor God and live for His glory as you give back. So it's before the law, it's during the law, and it's actually what Jesus taught. The preacher, you're telling me Jesus taught about tithing? He did. It's in Luke's Gospel, for example, chapter 11, verse 42. It says this, Give God, you give God, Jesus said, you give God a tenth of your mint rue and all other kinds of garden herbs. That was the littlest thing that they had. They gave God a tenth of everything. But Jesus said the problem for the Pharisees is they, they neglected justice and the love of God. And if you want to hear Jesus teach on tithing, it's right here in verse 42, the last sentence. He told the religious leaders, he said, you should have practiced the latter. That is neglect, uh, that is justice and the love of God without leaving the former undone. Jesus told the religious leaders they were supposed to tithe. Jesus said tithe. It was before the law of Moses. It was during the law of Moses. It's in the ministry of Jesus. And then you say, what? Well, hold a second, preacher. After that, during the church, because we live under the, what's called the law of Christ, right? That's what it says. Uh, Galatians 6, verse 2, when we carry each other's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ. So we're under the law of Christ. And you say, preacher, after Jesus lived and during the church age, was it ever commanded that we tithe? Fair enough. It, it's not actually in there anywhere that says for the church, thou shalt tithe. It's not there. But it does say this, which is scarier, I think. It says this in 2 Corinthians 8. Uh, the Holy Spirit says, brothers, Paul writes, brothers, we want you to know about the grace of God, the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty. It wasn't just a little poverty, it was extreme poverty. Welled up in rich generosity. And he goes on in verse 7 to call that the grace of giving. See, in the church, for those of us in Christ, the Holy Spirit in our lives... We are commanded to continue, excel in the grace of giving. And for me, I was born and raised in a church. I was taught, my granddad taught me to give from the time I swept his back porch off for a dollar. A tithe on Sunday, you have to give a dime. And so far as I know, I'm not bragging at all, but so far as I know, I've given a tithe of every dime I've ever made. But have I participated in the grace of giving? Have I, if I were in extreme poverty, would I still be giving somebody else? Because when I consider that question, I'm just going to be honest, I'm afraid I'm falling up short. Because when I talk about the stuff in the beginning of this sermon, I'm, I'm, one, I'm one of you. I've mean, I got a bunch of stuff that I don't even need. I'm looking for some place to store my stuff. If you open one of those self-storage, call me. <laughs> Are we... 
Are we participating? The Holy Spirit of God says, the grace of giving, see that you excel in this grace of giving, and are we doing that? That's the question. Now the question we started this whole sermon with is this. Uh, do we have to tithe? And the answer to that question is actually, absolutely not. No, 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 you don't have to tithe. You don't have to read your Bible. You don't have to pray. You don't have to attend services. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. And if you're doing anything because you have to, let me just suggest stop. If you have to read your Bible, just quit. If you have, if you, I'm coming here because I have to be here. Man. I'm, I have to. Then I, I just encourage you to stay home. Christianity is not a have to thing. It's, it's a get to thing. And I've shared with you, it's like I never, I never have to kiss my wife. But sometimes I get to. And God wants us so much in love with Him that we, that we get to. So do I have to tithe? Absolutely not. You don't have to. But, but if you understand ownership, if you understand that all the French fries in the universe belong to God, you understand every blessing you have, every breath you have, every heartbeat you have comes from Him. The book of Deuteronomy says that it is the Lord your God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. If you understand ownership and you understand the power of the gospel, I'll remind you from 2 Corinthians 5, uh, and he, he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and was raised again. If, if you understand the gospel, those stripes on his back were my stripes. That suffering, that agony, those spit in his face, those punches was what I deserved. And I'm set free because of his suffering. It reminds me of Psalm 100 verse 1. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Woo! Woo! We're set free. We're redeemed. We're heaven bound. Grace is sufficient. When you realize the power of the gospel, you realize ownership, and you want to go to heaven. And you know the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you do all that, you don't have to tithe. But you're invited to share with us in the giving opportunity. And from the scriptures as we've looked at today, we would recommend that you give at least 10%. That seems to be the minimal threshold in God's Word. But don't give one dime that you have to give. But if you want to serve God, you want to live for God's glory, you want to give for God's sake, realizing everything comes from Him and you exist again for His glory, then you're invited to share.